So, um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Natalie and all the other people from the uh, FSHD Global for their uh, kind uh, uh, invitation and, uh, to be part of this very exciting uh, uh, Science Week. I'm really looking forward to interact with uh, all of you and addressing all your questions that uh, uh, may come up during uh, this day. Uh, so, I'd like to start my presentation by giving you some uh, 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 concepts that uh, uh, I realize are very basic concepts, but I think are very important in order to understand the uh, uh, complications and, the, uh, uh, and why FSHD in, uh, uh, in many ways is different from your classical uh, genetic disease. So the first concept that I want to uh, uh, reiterate for you uh, is the one of the genome. So I, I guess that most of you are familiar with the fact that when you talk about genome, you're talking about the genetic material of uh, uh, all organisms. So this is the, uh, um, the uh, DNA. So our genome is the place where the information that is needed in order to build uh, our cells like we are. So uh, to uh, uh, build our, our tissues and our bodies, it is stored. And so this, uh, uh, the genome in a human being is a very large uh, molecule. So it's a molecule that has uh, the size of three meter. It's a three meter lo uh, long molecule. And the amazing thing is that this molecule, it is stored inside the microscopic cell. So the, uh, this molecule need to be compacted about one million times in order to be stored inside uh, the nucleus of each one of the cells of our body. This is a very, uh, an amazing uh, uh, um, level of compaction that this molecule is going through, but it's also something that offers an opportunity to the cell to uh, regulate the activity of this molecule because uh, by regulating the level of compaction of different regions of our, our genome, we are able to either turn on by opening up the structure of a region or turn off by compacting even more a given region, uh, the expression of genes, allowing us uh, the production of particular proteins that are needed to uh, uh, make us what we are. And this is what is allowing me to introduce a, a, another concept that is the one of the epigenome. So by epigenome, uh, what I want to mean tonight is uh, are all those modifications that are needed to compact the genome and that are instructing the genome on uh, uh, what to do, when to do it, and where to do it. So by the differential compaction of this molecule, uh, we are capable of turning on muscle protein, only muscle, uh, fat protein, only fat, or embryonic protein only during uh, embryogenesis and not uh, uh, later on uh, in development. So this is a, a very uh, basic but important uh, aspect that is really allowing us to reach the level of complexity that uh, is typical of a human being. Uh, but these are also very key concepts in order to understand what is going on uh, uh, in uh, FSHD. So you all uh, know that uh, uh, in FSHD, uh, the, uh, the main locus affecting the disease is located on the uh, uh, very uh, uh, tip of a particular uh, uh, human chromosome, which is chromosome 4 in position for Q35. And you all know, I'm sure, that in this region there is a repetitive sequence, which is called D4Z4. Now, this sequence uh, in healthy subjects is present in very high uh, number of copies. So you may have up to 100, 150 uh, units of D4Z4 in healthy subjects. And the presence of such a high number of copies instruct uh, the uh, uh, epigenome to make this region very compact. So in healthy subjects, this region uh, is very compact. And so the, the uh, information, the genetic information that is stored in this region is nearly inaccessible to the machinery of the cell. And so the protein that are encoded by this region cannot be made or are made at a very low level. Uh, in FSHD, what is going on is that there are so-called epigenetic alterations. So there is an alteration of the epigenome in this region. The modification to which I was uh, alluding to before are different in the patients. And these modifications are bring about by uh, uh, at least two different uh, uh, mechanisms. So the first one, which is the one that is most commonly found in FSHD patients, so-called FSHD1 patients, is brought about by uh, 
deletions by loss of these repetitive units. So when you have a, a reduction in the number of D4, D4 repeat below uh, what appear a, a critical number of uh, 11 unit, so typical FSSD, one patient has between one and 10 D4, D4 repeat, so when you reach this site, this, this number of repeat, you have uh, uh, an epigenetic switch. Similarly, you get to the same uh, result also when you have mutations in genes that are regulating the so-called epigenetic status of the uh, uh, FSSD locus, so in what are called FSSD2 patients. The net result of both type of changes is that uh, you go from a region that is compact and not expressed to a region that is more open, so the, 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 the uh, information in this region now become accessible to the uh, uh, cellular machinery that can uh, uh, read uh, what is stored here and uh, produce the protein, uh, use this information to produce the protein that is encoded by this region and this protein it is, this FEMOX uh, DAX4 that is now considered the major culprit for the development of FSST. So once again, to uh, focus on this specific aspect, what is going on in FSST is that you have the DNA of the uh, um, FSSD locus that become open, so more accessible. This is, is read to produce what is called an RNA molecule, which then it is translated in a protein that is DAX4. Now DAX4, we, we have learned that the aberrant expression of DAX4 in the skeletal muscle of FSSD patient, it is associated to toxicity, and so there are a number of toxic effects that have been uh, uh, shown uh, attribute to this aberrant expression of uh, DAX4 in, in the muscle, including inflammation, uh, oxidative stress, so things that are damaging the muscle cell cause uh, the death of the muscle cell and uh, hence lead to muscle wasting in FSHD patients. Now what we are realizing more and more is that uh, the, this process is actually not so simple as it is described here, but that uh, there are a number of layers important for the regulation of uh, uh, DAX4 uh, expression, including the fact that uh, beside uh, uh, this uh, RNA that is encoding for the DAX4 protein, the repeat is also capable to produce a number of uh, uh, RNA molecules that are not encoding for a protein. So these are RNA molecules, so-called non-coding RNA molecule, whose function is not to lead to the production of the protein, but at least a number of them uh, we are learning have regulatory role. So they, for example, regulate the production of DAX4, how much DAX4 is made. So this is uh, part of the research that is going on in my lab that is supported by the FSHD Global. Uh, in particular, a few years ago, we discovered one particular of this uh, uh, non-coding RNA, which is called, we call it DVET. So what we discover is that uh, DBET, it is actually a molecule that is produced from uh, the region next to the uh, uh, D4, D4 repeat, and is a molecule that is binding to the FSHD locus. And this molecule is a, a, a very interesting molecule also in terms of uh, uh, possible therapeutic development because of what we discovered during the year is that uh, this molecule is expressed very similarly to uh, DAX4, so it is made selectively in uh, uh, FSHD1 and FSHD2 patients. In particular, its expression seems to be restricted to the muscle cells uh, of the patients, and uh, we found that this molecule has an important regulatory function. So because we found it is required for the uh, uh, apparent expression of DAX4 and actually additional uh, genes located in the area in FSHD patients. And the mechanism that we are discovering uh, for the way this molecule is working is that this RNA, beside binding to the FSHD locus, is also binding and recruiting to the locus uh, an important regulatory protein which is called H1L. And H1L is a protein that have the ability to actually regulate those epigenetic modification I was alluding at the beginning. So it's a protein that when it's uh, lo um, recruited in a region is capable to open up the structure of this region. So what we have shown is that 
the production of the bed and the recruitment of H1L is actually responsible for the opening up of the chromatin structure in the FSSD locus, leading to the activation of DAX4 and uh, um, uh, other genes in the, in the region. And so part of what we are doing in the lab is better characterizing how uh, uh, these, uh, uh, the, the mechanism of action of the bed in order to uh, uh, develop uh, uh, therapeutic approaches uh, uh, targeting uh, uh, this molecule. And so we're focusing in particular on two uh, aspects of the biology of the RNA. We are studying more in details the interaction between the RNA and uh, the H1L protein. And during the years, we've been able to map uh, the precise uh, um, uh, region of the RNA and the protein that is uh, uh, involved in the interaction. We manage also to uh, uh, determine that uh, the RNA is capable also to regulate the activity of this protein. And uh, we're using this information in order to develop uh, 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 drugs that uh, will actually prevent the interaction between uh, uh, the RNA and uh, uh, H1L, uh, uh, blocking the recruitment of H1L to the FSHD locus. The other thing that we are studying in the lab is how uh, the uh, non-coding RNA is interacting with the FSHD locus. We found out that it is able to directly bind to the DNA of the FSHD locus. And once again, we are trying to take advantage of what we are learning in order to develop also in this case drugs that are in this case blocking the interaction of uh, the bed with the FSHD locus, uh, 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 preventing its uh, binding to the region and, uh, 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 we hope, preventing the apparent activation of uh, DAX4 in the patients. So this is one of the uh, um, uh, projects that is supported by uh, FSHD uh, Global. The other project that is supported uh, uh, by the foundation is a project aimed at developing an animal model that uh, we are hoping will reproduce uh, 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 better the uh, um, um, complexity uh, that is observed in the disease. And this stems for a number of questions that I think are really important and are still, uh, um, uh, nobody has been able to really address in the field. So for example, uh, uh, you're all familiar with the fact that although the genetic uh, uh, um, uh, defect that is present in FSHD patients is present in every single cell, in every single tissue, of the body of FSHD patients, skeletal muscle is the one that is mainly affected by the disease. Uh, we really don't know why the disease is mainly developing in the skeletal muscle and is not touching most of the other tissue. We don't know, for example, if this is due to the fact that uh, DAX4 is apparently produced mainly in the skeletal muscle uh, of the patients and not in the other tissue or, which may be even more interesting therapy for a therapeutic development, we don't know if uh, non-muscle tissue are in a way, if you wish, resistant to the uh, toxicity caused by the aberrant tax for expression. So uh, related to this, let, let me remind you uh, uh, of the fact that although DAX4 is uh, usually never expressed in uh, so, uh, somatic tissue of uh, uh, LT subjects, it is instead expressed at a very high level in the testes of LT people. So LT people express very high level of DAX4 uh, in, in testes, a level that are even much, much higher than the one are seen typically in the muscles of FSHD patients. Uh, but we don't see any sign of toxicity associated to this. Whether this is due to the fact that testes has developed some way to, uh, for example, uh, resist to the toxicity caused by DAX4, we don't know. But if we're able to understand this, maybe we will be able to endow with this resistance also the skeletal muscle of the patient. So related to this is the fact that uh, uh, you also know that, uh, yes, the disease is affecting the skeletal muscle, but not all skeletal muscle of FSHD patients are affected the same way. There are muscles that are severely affected, muscles that are never affected uh, by the disease. Once again, we have no idea why this is. It's because DAX4 is preferentially expressed only muscles that are uh, affected and not in the other, or because they are muscles that are resistant to the toxicity caused by DAX4, no idea about it. Uh, I can go on, another example is the fact that uh, there's this gender bias in the disease, males are usually more affected than females, why disease uh, 
uh, uh, we have uh, uh, no idea. And once again, I, I like to point out that these are not just you know, philosophical questions, but uh, because what I want to uh, stress out is the fact that if we really found out that there are ways that some type of cell, some tissue have developed in order to uh, become resistant to the toxicity induced by tax 4 this uh, uh, aspect may be, uh, we may take advantage of this in order to develop therapeutics uh, uh, for the disease. Now the reason uh, why, uh, uh, part of the reason why uh, we have been unable to address to this question is the fact that uh, in order to do this, uh, you will have to, uh, for example, analyze the expression of DAX4 in multiple tissues of the very same FSHD patient, which, as you can imagine, is impossible for ethical reason and also for uh, practical reason. Now, a way to go around this will be, for example, to have an animal model that faithfully uh, reproduce this key aspect of the disease, but unfortunately, this animal model is not available yet. So we don't have an animal model that present all these uh, uh, um, um, complicated, if you want, uh, aspect of the disease. So we are really not in a position to address these questions that may be important for both for the understanding of the pathogenesis of the disease, why uh, particular muscles are getting affected and not others, why muscle and not other tissue. Uh, uh, at the moment, we have uh, no answer to this question. And also, the uh, lack of a model that uh, reproduces key aspects of the disease is also something that uh, is creating issue in order to test possible therapeutics. Because ideally, you would like to test a, a therapeutics on a model that you think may really allow you to predict what uh, may be the result in the patient. So you want to have a model that is as close as possible uh, to uh, what you actually see in the patient. So this, all of this is uh, not possible at the moment. And there are a number of reasons why this is not possible at the moment. Uh, some of them are listed here. So uh, uh, one of the reasons is that the genetic region that is associated with the disease is present only in humans. So uh, uh, mice, for example, that are the typical uh, uh, animal that are used frequently in the lab to generate animal model, don't contain the FSHD locus. So this means that the, uh, your classical approaches that uh, everybody of us is using in the lab to generate animal models cannot be used in order to model FSHD. We need to become more, if you wish, creative in order to address that. The other issue related to this is that frequently what has been reported is that the aberrant expression of uh, DAX4 is very toxic, even at very low level. And so a number of the models that have been developed are either not viable, so you never get uh, the, the actual mice because they die very early on, or they are so sick that uh, it's very difficult to work with them. And connected to this, what we, we and others have shown is that uh, the particular location of DAX4, so the fact that DAX4 is embedded inside the repetitive sequence that is present in a uh, high number of copies, the fact that DAX4 is present uh, uh, toward the tip of uh, 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 the chromosome are really important to regulate its expression. And so because of all this uh, issue, we really think that if we want to model this aspect of the disease that I've been discussing, we need to generate a model that will reproduce uh, uh, all of this. And so the way we decided to go about it is to engineer uh, uh, so-called human artificial chromosomes. And so basically what we have done is to uh, uh, generate small chromosomes, small uh, human-like chromosomes that contain all the genomic region that we think is important uh, uh, for uh, FSHD. And these uh, uh, um, artificial chromosomes are uh, uh, at the moment being put inside uh, uh, mouse uh, embryonic stem cells in order to develop what they are called transgenic mice, which we hope will be uh, 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 present the uh, feature that have been described uh, for you so far. In particular, we have generated two different uh, artificial chromosomes, one that is mimicking the situation that is present in healthy subjects. So we have uh, an artificial chromosome that contains uh, a high uh, number of D4Z4 repeat, 
of course, DAX4, the telomere of chromosome uh, 4, and a number of other genetic sequences, including this uh, DBET uh, non-coding RNA that I mentioned to you uh, uh, upstream of it. And we also have generated uh, a, a, the uh, FSHD-like version of it. So the, the same one, but which, uh, uh, with a very uh, small number of uh, D4D4 repeat. Once again, with the hope that we will obtain mice that will not, uh, display uh, all these features of the FSHD and will allow us to understand better the, uh, what is responsible for the uh, development of the disease and why different tissue are differentially affected. And then also will put us in a position to, uh, will offer the community the possibility to test therapeutics on a more relevant model uh, of the disease. And uh, I can uh, close here, but I will be more than happy to take uh, any question uh, from the audience. What are the current uh, models that are being used, animal models, for other therapeutic uh, investigational approaches outside of what you just described today? You're talking for FSSD, other models for FSSD. So there's a number of models that are, have been already developed and are under development. Uh, so uh, Silveria uh, developed uh, um, a model that have some of the features that have been described. So a model that contain a different copy number of uh, um, uh, D4, D4. Uh, um, in particular, one mouse with a lot of D4, D4 repeat, another mouse with few D4, D4 repeat. The problem uh, with that model is that, unfortunately, the expression level of DAX4 is not that high, and so the, the, the phenotype of this model is not that uh, strong, so that there's no muscular dystrophy in this model. So it is useful to study, for example, aspect of the regulation of the locus, but in terms of looking at... Uh, uh, pathogenesis, uh, uh, it has some, uh, uh, some limit. Uh, other people have um, generated instead uh, models in which DAX4 is taken totally out of contest, uh, and so uh, they took uh, just a piece encoding for DAX4, uh, put it, uh, um, hook it to a regulatory sequence that is totally artificial, it's not the one of the endogenous gene, uh, and with the hope to be able to uh, uh, modulate uh, uh, his expression. So the final hope was to generate a model in which they were able to turn on and off at will the expression of DAX4. Uh, the unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, what happened with this case is that uh, they discovered that in that setting, even if DAX4 is expressed at a very, very low level, there is very high mm, toxicity, and so uh, um, they very rarely obtain viable animals. So most of the animals die uh, very early on into development, and so they end up with basically very little they can work with. A very interesting model that has been described, published uh, recently, is a xenograph model in which what very elegantly has been done uh, is to uh, um, take uh, a piece of the uh, um, uh, muscle of uh, uh, FSHD patients, and this has been put, uh, uh, it has been transplanted in uh, uh, um, uh, the leg of uh, animals. In, when you do this, uh, uh, after some time, uh, the human tissue start to be uh, uh, growing and, and is uh, uh, when you do like a, uh, organ transplantation no? so in, in this way they manage to obtain animals that inside uh, the normal muscle of the mice have a little, pe a little piece of uh, uh, human muscle they saw interesting uh, things because they saw they were able to uh, see similar changes to what have been uh, described in the FSHD muscle now in this xenograph. Uh, they also managed to test possible uh, therapeutics because they tested uh, um, so-called antisense oligonucleotide to which they were able to silence the expression of DAX4 and these, uh, they had interesting readout with this. So this is a very interesting model but 
in itself also has a limitation. For example, it is the amount of work that is needed in order to uh, generate this type of model is, is very high. So uh, it is difficult to see how this may translate uh, to uh, uh, a clinical setting, uh, a preclinical setting, which you have, you know, a number of drugs that you want to test in a very high number of animals uh, in order to get, you know, statistically meaningful information, you will have to generate tens, at least, uh, of this type of model. And with this approach, uh, is, uh, uh, it is very cumbersome, very expensive, uh, and, 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 and the lifespan of it is also relatively short. Uh, so let's say that uh, the available models so far have uh, um, uh, managed to reproduce some of the aspect of the disease, but not all at once in a, in a single model. In each one of them has a limitation and so has prevented addressing also the type of question that I was uh, 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 alluding to during, during my presentation. Thank you very much. Just uh, one other quick one, and not the hijack, but just quickly on models. Has any work been done in modified human stem cells as a basis? Yeah, we also have done that. So we recently contributed to a publication from the uh, Genia Biocell, so a, a company, uh, an Australian company that also was supported by the FSHD Global. So we helped them in uh, setting up uh, so-called uh, um, um, so do two things. Uh, they produce themselves uh, uh, um, uh, embryonic uh, stem cells from uh, um, both LT donors and uh, FSSD patients. They also did the same uh, um, uh, by so-called reprogramming, so taking a piece of skin and bring them back to the uh, um, embryonic-like uh, uh, stage by generating so-called uh, IPS, so induced pluripotent stem cells. And so uh, with them, uh, we uh, develop also a way to differentiate these cells into the skeletal muscle lineage. Uh, we studied the expression of uh, the locus, and so we were able to uh, see that some of the regulation of DAX4, uh, for example, it is maintained in this system. Uh, which is, uh, I think, would be a very interesting system to perform um, uh, once again in the preclinical setting in which you have, uh, for example, drug candidates and you want to uh, quickly test them. And so uh, uh, with cells, this will be much, be much easier than doing it with animals. So for the initial uh, um, uh, studies, then one can think in a cellular model would be uh, uh, sufficient. And so these are a very interesting uh, uh, model to use. But then I think that uh, ultimately you would like to also be able to test uh, something that is, is positive in tissue culture also in vivo in, in an animal. Uh, and that's still uh, a difficult point at the moment. Thank you.